Another year, another black rectangle from Apple, but this year's event did focus rather intensely on one long anticipated feature, satellite connectivity. But why does that matter? What's the difference between cellular devices and satellite devices? And aren't our phones connected to satellites already? To help us answer these questions, we're going to tear down a SpotX satellite messenger device. The SpotX is designed for hikers and adventurers traveling outside the range of cell towers who may need to send out a distress signal. But before we take this thing apart, let's figure out what the difference between a cell phone and a satellite device even is. Cell phones work by transmitting radio waves across a set of regulated frequencies from your device to the nearest cell tower. You can be anywhere in the world and a cell tower within range will be looking for a transmission coming from your phone within a specific set of frequencies. But just as your Wi-Fi at home has a limited range, your cell signal also has a limited range. It's around three to four kilometers and you need direct line of sight to the tower as well. That's why cell towers have become such a common sight in just about every populated area. It's also why so many places have no cell coverage, no cell towers. The issue with range and line of sight is the problem that satellite communication, like the kind that Apple is adding to their phones, seeks to address. So how do satellite phones work? Well, satellite phones still use radio waves and they still use cell towers, kind of. It's just that this cell tower has been shrunk, put on a rocket and launched 1500 kilometers into low earth orbit. Now we have direct line of sight to our satellite slash cell tower, but it's also way more than four kilometers away. This is where an appropriate frequency and antenna come into play. The lower the frequency, the longer the range of the signal while using less power. And this SpotX operates at a pretty low frequency. Plus it has this beefy antenna. Even so, you'll need to keep the antenna pointing directly skyward for up to five minutes in order to send or receive a single SMS message. So long as the sky is clear and you have a satellite overhead, you can send limited communications from anywhere, right? So in theory, yes, this would provide you with global coverage, except the word global is probably used very loosely here. For the Spot X, coverage is certainly good, but it's clearly not complete. To achieve true comprehensive international coverage, Global Star would have to launch more satellites to cover all of those dead zones. Apple's SOS service is even more limited, currently only being offered in the US and Canada. That's enough theory, let's crack this thing open. The device is very clearly meant to be rugged and durable given its nature as an emergency life-saving tool. The device is IP67 rated, which means that it doesn't mind being dunked in a cup of hot tea. Removing the rear cover is simple enough. Seven torque screws and it pops right off. Notice the antenna cable and the rather large antenna it feeds into. The modem feeds outgoing transmissions through this wire and up to the antenna. The antenna then transmits the electromagnetic pulses that create the radio wave out towards the listening satellite. And they've made the always terrible decision of soldering the battery wires directly to the board. Non-removable batteries are a leading cause of fire during waste disposal and they also make repairs unnecessarily difficult. On a positive note, there's no tea on the inside. The rubber gasket lining the device helps guard against fluid ingress, but this is clearly not a heavy duty solution, so probably don't take it for a swim. We spoke to an expert in the field of radio communications, Will Lumpkins of ONS Services, who confirmed that the modem might be the key to conserving battery power while transmitting over very large distances. So what does a device need to communicate with a satellite? First, it needs an antenna that can be sufficiently focused on a target that's at least 1500 kilometers away and moving in excess of 25,000 kilometers per hour. Second, a modem that supports the specific frequency range we want to use. And third, a battery that can provide sufficient power to transmit over the required distance. T-Mobile and SpaceX are hot on Apple's heels with claims they'll be able to enable text messaging and limited data services with most existing phones. But they have to launch a whole new set of Starlink 2 satellites. The existing ones don't have big enough antennas. So SpaceX could have something much more capable than this, but first they have to obtain regulatory approval before they can even launch the satellites into orbit. Apple and Global Star, on the other hand, they're ready to go now. 